guys, it's Rach. Today's video is going to be a makeup tips or tricks video, but first I wanted to set the scene or create a little scenario if you will. So imagine this, you have done your research, you have watched some videos, you have read some blogs, you have sort of looked at it in store and you've decided to spend your money on a new foundation. Foundation is so much fun and I love trying new foundations and you're so excited about trying this new foundation. You think it's going to be fantastic, it's going to work really well for your skin and you take it home, you start to use it, you use it a couple of times and to be honest, you're not really impressed and you use it again and you're still not impressed and then there are some times where you, you downright just don't like it at all and for whatever reason, you can't take it back and now you're stuck with the foundation. It sucks. It sucks when you spend your money, particularly if you've done your research and something like foundation when you can spend or end up spending a fair bit of money if you're going for more of a high-end one and then it turns out to not work for you. So I thought I would share with you some things you can do to work with a bad foundation. Now I'm gonna use the term bad foundation, but to be honest, there is no such thing as a good or a bad product. It's all about your own expectations and some things will work for some people and some things will work for others, but it's basically, we're talking about dealing with a foundation that's not meeting your expectations in all the different areas. And I'm gonna talk about all the different tools and things that you can use, ways that you can make a foundation and whatever problem it has work for you. A lot of these are super obvious and a lot of them you probably already know but I thought it would be nice to have them all together. I wrote out a little list in my um, notebook. It says hell's yeah in like copper. I just I love it. But I made a list of all the things that you can use and ways that they can fix the foundation or fix an issue with the foundation I thought I would share with them with you today. I would also love it if you've got any stories or uh, when this has kind of happened to you and any tips that you have or things that you tried that worked to make the foundation work for you. It may not be the greatest but when you spend your money, you want to be able to use the product and the last thing that you want is just for it to sit in a drawer and have you never touch it. So starting off with the makeup tools, because there are tool tools and there are makeup tools. So the makeup tools that you can use to help with foundation issues. The first one is concealer. Concealer is awesome and particularly you're looking at spreadable concealers or ones that you can use on large areas of the face. I'm talking something like your Maybelline Fit Me or Age Rewind. NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I've seen people use this on very large portions. It's something that's spreadable. Clarins Instant Concealer. There are so many out there, but you're looking for something that is on of a thinner con consistency and something that can be used in large areas. And the way that concealer can work is twofold. One, if you uh, if you have a foundation that just doesn't build or doesn't give you the coverage that you want, concealer can obviously be used to to add that coverage that you need. Also, concealer can be used to help color correct or tone correct if you find that your foundation is a little bit too dark. Using concealer in large areas, like a lighter concealer in the center of your face, under the eyes, you've seen all those contouring videos or those pictures where people have sort of white over half their face. That will really help kind of even out the darkness and if you find that you blend them together, you'll end up sort of color correcting the foundation in that it won't look so dark on your skin. Obviously it's to a point, but it can definitely help with that. And then it can also help, I guess, in that same vein, maybe if your concealer is a little bit more yellow and the foundation's too pink, you can kind of mix it together and it might work. It's not going to be perfect, but it will definitely help. In the similar way, just another foundation can help with the foundation that you have. Mixing foundations together can really help fix with texture issues. It can help fix with coverage issues, it can help fix with color issues. For example, I have the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus and I bought it in a shade that's way too light for me. I mix it with a darker foundation, it fixes the issue. It's not a perfect solution because in an ideal world I would just have the right color, but I can mix them together and I can get the right color. I also will mix foundations together if one has a little bit more coverage, but the other one might be a little bit more dewy and I like that finish, so mixing them together gives me like the best of both worlds. The, the tone correcting thing, like the undertone, if you've got a foundation that's particularly yellow and you need it to be a bit more pink or you, the other way around is usually the case, you've got a foundation that's quite pink and you need it to be a bit more yellow, mixing them together can work. And also with the, the finish of the foundation, like I said, the, the dewiness of it or the matteness of it, you can mix textures together and sometimes it just makes a better foundation. The next tool that you have in your arsenal is powder. 
and they can be used for different things. Now, if you have a foundation that's a little bit too tacky, if it's a little bit too dewy, if it doesn't have enough staying power or enough oil control, a powder can definitely counteract that, particularly a mattifying powder. This one's uh, the Essence All About Matte, and this does wonders for me on with foundations that are a little bit too hydrating or a little bit too dewy for my oily skin. Using a powder lightly and correctly can definitely help to counteract those issues that I might have with a particular foundation. The other option with powder is to go for ones that have a little bit more full coverage or have maybe even a powder foundation. These can be used in the similar way that concealers can be used. They can be used to add more coverage. They can be used to help deepen a shade or lighten a shade of foundation if you've got the wrong color. They can help with the, the tone correcting. This powder I find, this is DeVille from uh, NARS. This is the, what is it called? It's just the, the powder foundation. I don't know if it has a specific name, but I find that this is a little bit yellow. So if I have foundations that are a little bit too pink, putting a bit of this on top can counteract that. It also adds that extra coverage sometimes when I need. And certain, found, certain powders can be quite smoothing as well. Sometimes a foundation might not be so forgiving over pores, and if you go for a really smoothing powder over the top, it can kind of counteract that and make the, the overall finish of the foundation look better. Primer. Now there are a ton of different uses for primer and different reasons why people use primer. Again, if a, if a foundation isn't particularly smoothing or isn't easy blending over the skin, a primer can be used to help give it that little bit of extra slip. A primer can be used to help fill in your pores, so therefore if your foundation isn't that forgiving over pores, it may work a bit better because the primer sort of already done the work for it. I've also found that primers that have a little bit of a white tone to them can be mixed with a foundation to make it a little bit lighter. Something like this LeBlanc uh, from Chanel. This is a whitening one and I find also the Lumi Magique from L'Oreal. If I mix these, because they're actually like a white color with a foundation, it can lighten it half a shade, which is sometimes all that you need. They can also help add luminosity to a foundation. They can help uh, thin it out so it's not so thick. Sometimes if you have a really heavy foundation, mixing it with a primer can help fix the texture that it has and make it feel a little bit nicer on the skin. So a lot of uses for primer there. And in a similar vein, you can also use a moisturizer that way to thin out a foundation, to sort of lighten a foundation a touch, to make it easier to blend, to make it look more smooth on the skin. If it's not particularly friendly to dry skin, like a, the foundation that you're using, mixing it with a moisturizer can certainly help. Then sticking with the makeup front, we have liquid illuminators. Now these are something that you can obviously use on top of your foundation, but if you have a foundation that's just too matte or too dry looking on your skin, mixing it with a liquid illuminator can help. It can help change the color a little bit if you have a lighter one. This one is from Face of Australia. I also have the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector as examples, and I use these a lot mixing with them with foundations. Sometimes they'll help, again, thin out the foundation so it's not so heavy and cakey looking on the skin. And for those of you who do prefer a more luminous look or have dehydrated skin, mixing a foundation that might be a bit too matte for you with a liquid illuminator can counteract that issue. My last makeup tool for fixing or working with a foundation that you don't particularly like is color correctors or tone correctors. I have here the Cover Effects Custom Cover Drops and I've talked about these quite a bit on my channel because I fell in love with them. Something similar might be the Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Enhancer or any of these. This is like a pure pigment so I can add this to a foundation that's not giving me enough coverage but you can also add this to a foundation to change the color. If you struggle with finding a shade dark enough, I know particularly for darker skin girls, trying to find a drugstore foundation in your shade must be extremely difficult because every time I look at like the counters, particularly in Australia, it's very hard to find a really deep shade of foundation. It's also really hard to find a really pale shade these come in a ton of different shades that go quite dark and quite light. They also go quite pink and quite yellow. So you can use something like this to deepen the shade in terms of like darkening it or lightening it. And you can also use it to change the tone to make it more pink or to make it more yellow to suit your skin. So that can definitely help because I find for me a lot of the time when I'm having an issue with a foundation, it's usually a color thing that's that's 
really the most obvious. Sometimes it'll be a texture thing or it'll be that it's not doesn't have enough longevity or whatever the other issues that you can kind of find with foundation. But color and getting the right undertone is, is a big problem and these can kind of can definitely help as can something like this this is the face atelier pro ultra foundation in zero minus there's also a zero plus this is a white foundation and basically what i use with this with is with my deeper foundations to make them lighter in winter time um, if i don't have much of a tan i find that this basically keeps the foundation as is it just makes it lighter and then the plus would make it darker if that's what you need. Lastly, there are a couple of tools that I find can help with your foundation woes. The first is a beauty blender or beauty sponge. A damp sponge can help with application. It can help shear out a foundation that's too heavy. It can help add dewiness to a foundation that's a little bit too matte. It can help give, I guess, a smooth application to a foundation that isn't easily blendable or that may not just slide on the skin the way that you would like it. You can use it after you apply your foundation to take away streaks or marks if you're finding that your foundation just isn't applying well with a brush or with the way that you usually apply your foundation. My last little tool that I've used to help deal with a foundation that's not working for me is actually the humble tissue or piece of toilet paper. I find that if you just separate these out, I like to have it so it's just one thin piece like this. If I have a foundation that's a little bit too sticky, it's not drying down the way that I would like, or it's a little bit too dewy, I'll apply a thin layer and then use a tissue just to pat over it and I find it takes away that excess stickiness or that excess dewiness that I might not want and then you can go in with a second layer and do the padding again. If you're finding that throughout the day your foundation isn't sitting nicely but powder makes it cake, this is a great alternative to like a blotting pa paper or something like that. You can use that just to tap over the foundation and it will take away that excess shine without taking away too much of the coverage. Um, you can also use this with powder so you can actually powder over the top which will give you like a lighter application of powder if you're finding that for whatever reason it's caking up with powder or it, you don't really want to take away too much of the nice dewy finish but you do need to set the foundation because it doesn't have great longevity. I don't know I'm just making up all the scenarios that I can think of but this can really really help you and it's something that you just you have in your house all the time. So I think I've covered everything there that I had on my list. Like I said, I know that some of them are completely obvious, but sometimes you don't always think about these things when you're sort of frustrated by the fact that your foundation is not working for you. And for those of you who may be a little bit newer to makeup and, and haven't heard these things before or didn't realize that you could do this or just hadn't put it two and two together in your mind, I hope you found it helpful.